Marlon Cooper has been considering leaving his job and retiring for the past several years. I can't spend the rest of my life wandering the woods and defusing animal traps now, can I? Thought the man time and time again. He had spent most of the 55 years of his life protecting the forest as part of a ranger squad, which protected rare animal species from the crimes of poachers and hunters. Marlon Cooper joined the ranks of the protectors of the flora and fauna right after serving in the Marines, where he was let go from into the Army Reserve once his contract was up. It was also when he was back to his native forest in Montana that the former Marine met a beautiful young woman named Bridget, who later became his wife. The Coopers have had to go through a lot. The couple had a happy marriage and a daughter named Jennifer, who'd become the meaning of their lives. Bridget was understanding of her husband's job, as he had to spend most of his time in the local forest, diffusing animal traps set up by poachers. Time flew by quickly, inexplorably changing the pages of the calendar. When Jennifer grew up, she went off to study in California with her friends. After graduating from college, she got married and settled down there, which was a truly heavenly place, caressed by the sun and warm ocean waves. Things seemed to be going well, but then trouble knocked at Marlon Cooper's door. His wife, who had previously complained of a tingling sensation in her heart, got very ill. This timid and quiet woman had chosen to ignore the alarming symptoms and dealt with them using easily accessible over-the-counter medications. The problem was that Bridget Cooper frequently ignored her husband's advice, even though he repeatedly insisted that she needed to go see a doctor as soon as possible. Unfortunately, the woman preferred to self-medicate. Of course, this couldn't have ended well. Thus, one morning, the woman felt ill just a couple of hours after her husband left the house to go on a round of the nearby forest. Unfortunately, despite the fact that Mrs. Cooper called the ambulance immediately, when the paramedics got there, all they could do was call the time of death. The woman had suffered from a massive heart attack. Needless to say, this came as a massive blow to Marlon Cooper, from whom Bridget was always the closest and dearest person in the world. After his wife's death, Mr. Cooper started looking haggard, as if he instantly aged a few years. The only source of joy from the widower were the walks into the forest, which he knew like the back of his hand. Mr. Cooper loved breathing in the invigorating pine sap-scented air and listening to the rustling branches of the stately larches and maples. One day, during one of his walks, the ranger went a little further than usual. The terrain was very overgrown and hard to get through, so he had to go very slowly. Suddenly, Marlon Cooper's attention was caught by a muffled moan coming from far away and sounding more like a sigh. The man's hand automatically moved for his gun, hanging over his shoulder. Of course, the ranger rarely used it, but in this part of the forest, danger could be waiting for a person walking alone at any point. Shortly after, the moaning repeated and Marlon realized that it was coming from the nearby bushes. Carefully pushing the bushes apart, the ranger saw a horrible sight. On the clearing by the old pine tree, there was an emaciated lynx whose front paws were caught in the steel teeth of an animal trap. In the eyes of the miserable animal was the indescribable pain and fear of the human. Easy now, sweetie, don't be afraid. I'll free you in a second. Let me just find the right stick to use as a lever and I'll get right on it. Mr. Cooper tried to calm down the predator. Of course, the ranger realized that the lynx didn't understand a single word he was saying. It was clear that the forest cat had spent a long time in the torturous trap and was barely hanging on and about to collapse. To Mr. Cooper's surprise, once he freed the animal, the lynx didn't show any resistance and even gave him a timid, gratuitous lick on the hand. Well, what am I going to do with you now? Mumbled the man, puzzled, and looking at the miserable animal with pity. Of course, Mr. Cooper was well aware that without his help, the lynx would either die on its own or become prey for larger predators such as bears or wolves. This is why the ranger carefully wrapped the predator in his sack and carried it on his shoulder to his old Chevrolet, which he providently left by the edge of the forest. Bending over under the weight of the lynx, Marlon Cooper could hear its intermittent breathing near his ear and an awkward movement clearly caused the animal unimaginable pain. 
The ranger understood that the poor predator was suffering, so he tried to drive as carefully as he could. Once they got home, Mr. Cooper inspected the lynx's injured paw and realized that it required some strong medication. After treating the wound with antiseptic, the man gave the lynx, who was shaking from a fever, a couple of injections of antibodies and covered it with a blanket. There you go. This is much better. Now you'll definitely get better. It's too early for you to die, my dear. Look at how fluffy and shiny your coat is. You're still so young, whispered Mr. Cooper, stroking the lynx's back. The next morning, the ranger repeated the procedures and tried to give the predator some chicken broth. To his surprise, even though the lynx was very weak, it didn't refuse the food and drank about a third of it. Marlon Cooper didn't even notice how he started treating the forest predator like a regular pet who, by the human's fault, got into trouble. Meanwhile, many of the ranger's friends and colleagues said, You shouldn't get too attached to it, Marlon. It'll definitely die. Can't you tell? Look, you can see its ribs. You should have shot it right away instead of prolonging its suffering. In response to this, Mr. Cooper told them off, choosing to believe that the lynx would surely recover. Fortunately, the experienced ranger's intuition was right. Not a week later, the lynx got up on its feet for the first time and swaying from side to side from emaciation, walked across the room. In memory of his cat that passed away many years ago, Mr. Cooper started calling the predator Lilu. As if understanding its rescuer's words, the lynx twitched its ears with tufts of hair on them and rubbed against his hand trustingly. How is it not a house cat? It might be a little too big to be one, but it's just as gentle and playful, thought Mr. Cooper and smiled. A few months flew by. Lilu was now fully recovered from its injuries and walked around the yard gracefully, looking for mice and other rodents. Meanwhile, the lynx was in no hurry to return to the forest and only rarely left the rescuer's property. You should be careful. I hope nothing bad happens. You're housing a predator after all. It will never be fully domesticated said Peter Murphy, who was Mr. Cooper's forest ranger partner. But Marlin just smiled and scratched the lynx behind the ears. The man felt in his heart that after everything it had to go through, the predator wouldn't cause him any harm. However, soon something happened that turned everything upside down. Jennifer, the ranger's daughter, came to pay her father a visit and take some time off in the picturesque Montana. She came with her husband, Austin, and their son, Tony. Needless to say, Marlon Cooper was overjoyed by the news. Beside himself with excitement, the ranger bought a month's worth of groceries at the supermarket and cleaned the house from top to bottom. Only Lilu didn't understand what was going on and stared at its owner, who seemed to have transformed suddenly. When Mr. Cooper's family walked into the house, chatting happily, the lynx backed off and let out a quiet, grumpy hiss. Dad, it won't bite, will it? Tony is only two years old, and this is a wild animal after all, Jennifer said, looking at the predator skeptically. In response to this, Marlon laughed and said that he didn't know a more loyal and kind creature on the planet than Lilu. Of course, at that moment, the ranger forgot that Jennifer and Austin had lived in California for many years and were no longer used to wild animals, especially ones that were standing an arm's length away from them. Three days flew by, and in the meantime, the lynx didn't only not hurt anyone, but it even started going into the little boy's nursery to sleep by his crib. Meanwhile, Jennifer watched the forest predators every step and refused to let it out of her sight. One day, during dinner time, Jennifer ran into the living room and, trying to catch her breath, screamed, Dad, your crazy lynx is growling at Tony. I told you it was dangerous. Get your gun and shoot it. Stop it, honey. Lilu is kinder than a regular house cat and you have no reason to be worried about her, replied the man, sighing. Unfortunately, Lilu's signs of aggression started repeating almost every single night. And every time, no one in the family could understand the reason behind its behavior. But when, in the middle of the night, Jennifer ran into her father's room with tears in her eyes, Mr. Cooper's face changed and turned pale. Then he silently took his old gun off its hook on the wall and headed for the nursery, 
Of course, the man still couldn't believe that the lynx could cause his family any harm whatsoever. Once it saw him, Li Lu's behavior transformed immediately, and it started rubbing herself against his leg. It doesn't look like it's showing any aggression towards Tony. What's the matter then? Thought Mr. Cooper, lowering his gun. The experienced ranger knew perfectly well that the wild animal would never show aggression towards a human being. Thus, Mr. Cooper realized that the lynx had probably seen something in the nursery that he missed when he hurried to make the room ready for his grandson. Carefully getting down to his knees by little Tony's crib, he thoroughly inspected the floor and the walls next to it. Suddenly, his hand felt a strange opening in the wall, about the size of a ripe orange. When Mr. Cooper shined his pocket flashlight at it, he saw something that made his heart sink. There were several pairs of small, evil eyes staring back at the ranger from the darkness. My goodness, those are snakes, flashed in Mr. Cooper's head. Flinching instinctively, the man quickly ordered his daughter to take his grandson out of the room and asked his son-in-law to hand him a heavy sack. To Mr. Cooper's surprise, there were five adult snakes in the burrow, each of which were dangerous to humans. Only two hours after finding them, the experienced ranger managed to get rid of all the creepy creatures that had turned his little grandson's nursery into their lair. Once Mr. Cooper's house was safe again, he managed to find the crack in the house's foundation, which the snakes used to get in. It was only then that the astounded man realized that all this time, Lilu wasn't hissing at Tony, but it was protecting the little one from the dangerous snakes that had made a home by his crib. To Mr. Cooper's great relief, his relatives understood this as well, thanking the smart lynx. Thank you, sweetie. You didn't let me down. I knew that you couldn't cause my family any harm, whispered Martin Cooper with tears in his eyes. As if understanding its owner's state, the lynx licked his cheek and let out a quiet meow. Ever since then, and until the end of their vacation, Jennifer and Austin weren't afraid of Lilu anymore. The lynx turned out to be not dangerous at all. It was actually very protective of their son. Hugging the domestic lynx, Marlon Cooper stroked the back of its head and called it his guardian angel, sent from above to protect his family. The story of Li Lu caused quite a stir among the local residents, and they kept retelling it to each other for a long, long time, thus taking the story of the smart lynx far outside the state's borders. <laughs>